Chapter thirteen of the Young Woman's Guide to Excellence by William A. Alcott. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Bria Snow. Chapter thirteen. Observation and reflection. Keep your eyes open with the reiterated counsel of a distinguished theologian of this country, the late Dr. Timothy Dwight, to a young student of his, and it was in the main very wholesome advice. And in so far as it is wholesome for young men i do not see but it is equally so for young women your countenance open your thoughts close you will go safe through the world was the advice of another individual of less eminence to a young friend of his and did it not savour a little too much of selfishness and perhaps of concealment it would like the advice of dr dwight be worthy of careful consideration it does not partake quite enough of the gospel spirit and sentiment as a man hath received so let him give it encourages us to get wisdom but not to communicate it i have said that the advice of dr dwight was in the main wholesome the only objection that can be made to it is that it gives no encouragement to reflection some may suppose it to mean that observation or seeing is everything now there are those who appear to see too much they always have their eyes open they are never satisfied otherwise they absolutely hate all reflection of this description of persons i am sorry to say our young women furnish a full proportion not a very small number of the female sex are so educated that it is quite painful for them to turn the current of their thoughts inward they will do almost anything in the world not absolutely criminal to prevent it it cannot indeed be quite said that they observe too much but it is perfectly safe to say that they see too much they should see much less with their eyes and the soul were left to its own reflections the result would be no doubt exceedingly happy solitude is as necessary as action and to both sexes no person is more pitiable than the individual of either sex and such individuals are by no means scarce in our own who cannot be easy unless perpetually running to see some new sight or like the athenians of old to hear or to tell some new thing who is nowhere so happy as when in company and nowhere so miserable as when alone zimmerman in his work on solitude a pleasant book by the way notwithstanding its gloomy name has some very appropriate and useful remarks on the advantages of being by ourselves a part of the time as a means of improvement should any of my young readers be sorely afflicted with the disease i have just mentioned a dread of themselves or of their own thoughts rather i beg them to read zimmerman but read him if you read him at all very thoroughly some persons read solely to get rid of reflection worse than this even some persons read work and play and i had almost said go to church and put themselves in the attitude of praise and prayer to get rid of themselves and their reflections who will show us any good thing is their constant cry not who will lead us by external agencies or by any other means to sound and useful reflection who will show us ourselves is a cry which among the young women of new england as well as those of most other countries is too seldom heard the best advice i can give to such persons next to that given in the sermon on the mount where they are directed to enter into their closet is to read with great care or rather to study what's on the improvement of the mind that is a work which has probably done as much good in the way of which i am now speaking than any book the Bible accepted, and the English language. End of chapter 13